Hello, my name is Benjamin Hart. I'm an American attorney and the managing director of Integrity Legal here in Bangkok, Thailand. In this video, as the title suggests, we're going to be discussing the form I-864P, uh, specifically within the context of the affidavit of support. For more information specifically on the I-864 or the I-134 affidavits of support, uh, specifically within the context of things like the fiancé visa or the marriage visas back to the United States, I suggest checking out the other videos on this channel as they specifically discuss those issues rather at length. What are we talking about with respect to the I-864P? Well, the form itself is essentially a yearly updated form which designates the federal poverty guidelines and the various ratios and percentages associated therewith. Why is this important? Well, pursuant to the regulations pertaining to I-864s and I-134s and specific to um, financial support, uh, an affidavit of support with respect to um, basically squaring out an affidavit with respect to an ability to support a fiance or a spouse in the United States, we need to, or at least the guideline or the regulations have to designate a threshold under which a, a sponsor can go ahead and sponsor an immigrant into the United States or non-immigrant in the case of the K-1, uh, a non-immigrant with immigrant intent. So to get on track here specifically, what are we talking about? Well, specifically what we're talking about is you got to meet a certain income requirement in order to get a foreign spouse or fiance into the United States. Um, the I-864P is somewhat beneficial in calculating those income requirements. Uh, generally speaking, for those in the 48 contiguous United States, it's required that um, an applicant or a petitioner uh, be able to show 125% of the federal poverty guidelines as adjusted for inflation. Um, those in Alaska and Hawaii are slightly different. The, the numbers are a little bit different there. Uh, with respect to those who are, who are in the armed services at the time they're petitioning for their spouse or fiance to get in the United States, the, uh, generally speaking, uh, those individuals only need to show 100% of the federal poverty guidelines in basic income. Um, in order to sponsor a foreign fiancé or spouse. Uh, a couple other things to keep in mind with respect to uh, sponsoring a foreign fiancé or spouse is, let's say that there's a shortfall uh, in income uh, with respect to a petitioner being able to act as a, act as a, joint, act as a sponsor, I should say. Um, there are some ways to get over this. One of them is there's a way to use assets to offset a shortfall in income. Um, and there's also the joint sponsor. Uh, joint sponsors can go ahead and act as a way of sort of filling the hole, not, not filling the hole, but they need to be able to sponsor the immigrant directly. Um, the other thing is with respect to, um, with respect to assets, if one can show five times the difference, five times the shortfall in income, in actual assets, this is stocks, bonds, mutual funds, real estate, cash in the bank, etc., or just cash, um, then it may be possible to go ahead and still overcome the income threshold requirement um, inherent in the I-864. The I-864P is a nice little reference tool, though. It's interesting. It's, it's amended every year to, again, sort of uh, adjust for inflation, I guess theoretically deflation, as it were, maybe. but. Uh, for all, purposes, for all intents and purposes, adjust for inflation. And uh, basically, it's a nice little tool with respect to the other affidavits, and it can be used uh, to assist those who are looking to sponsor a spouse or fiance coming to the United States.